Ladies and gentlemen, today is June 4th, 2018. The hair is long and I'm feeling strong. I am Keenan Lafferty and this is the Kane Kill Show, episode 370, where we learn to be better artists. Today we're going to be doing a paint along. That is a fancy way of saying that we're going to be doing everything live today. We're going to be discovering and concepting an entire armor piece for our beautiful, lovely maid of metal, Mika, over here, the pink haired girl. Grab some awesome images off of Pinterest, aka our reference. So we're going to be combining these two. We're going to be combining the left side and the right side to create an awesome made of metal armor set, including things that we learned from the previous week. We're going to be putting all that together and I'm going to be doing it live today. Show you guys how I go about doing that. So let's go ahead and get into it. And you'll notice up here, we got this handy little uh, title marker. So in case you want to skip back and forth through the entire episode, because I imagine this will be about 30 to 45 minutes uh, each. Um, if this thing goes for two parts, I don't know yet, but uh, it's a new thing that I had an idea for. Think of it as just bookmarking different areas so you know what you can expect. So with all that in mind, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is starting with our sketch. So of course, everybody knows the first thing that you want to start with is never this. Never ever start with a blank canvas. Go on Pinterest, get inspired, grab some references that you would like to steal from and combine all of those together. And then what we're going to do today is we're going to start by working small. We're going to start by working very, very small because what we want to do is we want to draw in or we want to get some basic ideas down first and that is what is the general idea of this picture going to look like what is the general uh, composition and balance of shapes going to look like okay and i know that i want to have a large made of metal or i want it to look kind of cute like this made picture or this made costume on the left side and then i want to combine it with these heavier plates of the knights on the right side so let's see if we can figure that out. I found a couple things that are gonna work well for us, such as the, the cloth that hangs down, this tabard type thing that hangs down from the breastplate uh, of the knight there that I really liked. And I wanted to try to combine that with a kind of a metallic breastplate in order to get a good looking made of metal armor piece. So this is a possible, one possible idea here. And this is all that we're aiming for right now. We're starting very, very rough, very rough with our sketches. You can even go in there. Sometimes I'll add in some, I'll add in some value. And that can take us to the next step. But rather than get too far into one sketch, I want to do another one. And notice how I'm drawing it from different angles. I'm drawing it with different poses because even just a pose can lead to a different feeling. It can lead to a different view of the armor. So let's see, maybe something like this. This could be really cool, actually. Okay, oh, I'm liking this already. I'm liking this thick to thin kind of, you'll notice that I created this large shape for the pauldron. And then right here, there's another large shape for the bracers, as well as the gloves. Maybe we have something that looks like this. Oh, that's already looking really cool. Oh, I like that a lot. You see how just by getting those early kind of figures down, you can get something that's looking really cool. See that? That has a much more interesting um, layering effect of thicks and thins, of thick shapes, large shapes, small shapes, and medium shapes. So you would call this sketch a little bit more balanced, a little bit more balanced. We're on a good track, but let's not get bogged down. Let's not get bogged down just yet. Let's move this up to the side, or let's rather select that and move that over. Let's do one more. I feel like we're getting closer to where we want to want to be. So we've got these big pigtails, and we've got this head right here. Really wanted to reference a little bit more of this Ornstein armor that we did from last week. So I want to have like smaller, much smaller, um, delicate pauldrons, and then kind of going out into these large tassets these large tassets at the end of the uh, breastplate. So let's see if we can do something similar to what we had on Ornstein. From last week, we've got these large tassets that hang down. And then maybe inside of that, we can have the skirt. And then maybe a large bow. Maybe something like that. So we'll have a little bow right here, which is referencing our made outfit on the left side. Another thing that I really like. 
And let's see if we can make sure that we get those thicks and thins in there. So where is the rest of the armor going to be? Or where is the, the arm going to rest? Maybe I'll have it right there. Maybe in this case, maybe what we should do is let's have this part of the arm be the large piece. We'll have a large piece here, and this could be like a poofy sleeve. that kind of sticks out like that, and then it can go to a thin, can go to a nice thin bracer and gauntlet. Cool. Cool. That one's not bad. Not bad. Cool. Uh, I want to mess around a little bit more with this because I feel like this is, whoops, this is almost where I want to be. And I really like this pose. You'll notice that the pose feels very, there's a really nice line of action that's moving through here. See that? You can see it kind of has that S curve going through it. Those types of gesture lines going through your art or going, going through your sketches, it's so hard to do this and talk at the same time, but I'm really working on it. It's it's so hard to be creative consistently, like actually making something and describing what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, but I, it is a challenge that I have accepted for better or for worse. Uh, so let's do one more because I really want to, the idea that I had behind this was that the upper, the upper part of the armor would be very dainty and cute and like layered. I imagine there's like these layering effects that would kind of come down. Um, but that's also starting to look more samurai looking, starting to look more Japanese when, when we start adding in those extra uh, layered effects. But there might be a way that we can make that work. So I'm kind of digging this. I'm kind of thinking maybe larger pants might work well too. Or we could have a tabard that comes down and hangs down like this. That could be cool too. And I'll add in a little bit of value there. So you watch me as I add in my values. Oh yeah, and of course I want the the upper part or the helmet to be reflective of the maid's headpiece as well. So let's see if we can do something like this. Ooh, that's looking really cool. I'm liking that a lot. And then maybe right here, it can be sort of cinched. There can be a bit of a kind of a corset right here, maybe in this area. That's looking pretty dang cool. And then what we can do is we can contrast, similar to the little apron that is at the bottom of the maid's uniform, that can now be replaced by this shape. And then this shape here can be the darks of the rest of the armor. That looks pretty cool. And then we can have like the collar and all that going on in there. Awesome. Ooh, I'm really liking that too. Really, really digging this. And then right here, we can have the butcher knife. Yeah, that looks cool. I'm gonna fix this leg really quick. I'm feeling really good about this one, guys. I think this will be the one. Now, I also want there to be a large bow. So let's make a large bow with like these kind of, these ribbons kind of coming down. I think that might be it, ladies and gentlemen. That might be our start. That might just be our start. I'd like to see if there's a way that I could make a visor out of this, but I don't know if that's going to work well. Might end up looking like Egyptian or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can't do that. But we can have a plate there. I know that we can have a plate that goes across like this. So let's start with that. Let's start with that. I think that's feeling pretty dang good. All right, so now that we have a sketch that feels good, notice that we did multiple sketches. We found something that we liked. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start moving into line work. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this title up here. Line work. Line work is a very fun part because once we have a general idea of what we're going for, we can size it up like this. 
And now we can begin going in there and really starting to pull out some additional details. So the way that I like to go about doing this is actually rather than going immediately into lowering the opacity, I think I want to work directly on top of this. And I'm going to do that by actually darkening this down and I'm going to be working in values. So let's actually, let's do values first. So sketch to value, value. Okay, cool. So the really fun part about value is you want to start thinking about things in terms of just black and white. It's so much easier to get your ideas down when you're not worried about colors just yet. These can be things like getting in subtle expressions. We can sketch in the eyes here. We can sketch in the eyes like this. Oh, I actually really like that. It looks nice. Cool. That looks good. Um, it's not absolutely necessary that you sketch in the character's face right now, but I like to do it just because it allows me to get more. Do you ever find it interesting that you can concept a character better once you have their face drawn? Once you have like an expression drawn and you get a feeling for who that character is, it almost allows you to think of what their armor would look like or more so what their, what their actual costume would look like. I find that that works really well for me. I don't know if that works for the rest of you guys, but that is what I like to do. I like to think of every every part of the concepting phase tends to benefit and kind of like shed some light on the other parts. So if you're having trouble designing a character's outfit, maybe try designing more of the face. If you're having trouble designing the face, maybe you could go the other way too. Design more of the armor. Design more of the actual clothes that they would wear. And then you might see more of the character's face in there. Or you might get a better idea or the inspiration to draw the character's face. Okay, so there we go. We got a cute Mika face. Awesome. Okay, so what I like to do from here is normally I work by just flipping back and forth between my stylus and my eraser, right? To kind of like create these lighter values. But when I'm in the value stage, what I'll end up doing is I will just, I'll have my thumb on the alt key and I'll be grabbing grays. I like to grab grays. And what I'll start doing is I'll just start laying in like shine effects. And I'll actually like begin pulling out a little bit more of the textures of these pieces, All right? So if I want this to appear metal, I would just kind of paint that in with a little shine on it. A little shine on there, okay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good. So let's go ahead and continue with this. Uh, I really like this headpiece. And what I'm trying to do here as well is I'm keeping my eyes out for motifs. Motifs are designs that will replicate themselves throughout the piece. And when you replicate designs throughout the piece, it allows the armor to look like it's custom made for the character, as opposed to like having multiple, so <laughs> as opposed to having multiple shape languages. So for example, here you can see that we've created this diamond shape up here. We've created this diamond shape and then it's followed by this and followed by that. This is what you would call a motif, a motif, that design right there. Now you want to start thinking of, if you like that motif, where are other places that we could use that in the armor? Uh, and if you don't like the motif, which in this case, I'm not really feeling it, uh, then try another one, try it again. And you can do that by hitting control J. And what that does is it just duplicates your layer and it allows you to begin kind of uh, working on a new layer. And if you mess it all up, right, if you do this, then you can just delete it and delete it and go back to where you were previously, okay? So, continuing with that, let's go ahead and see if we can find some other motifs that will work better for us. In fact, I'm thinking that maybe what we need to do here is we need to shrink this down because I like the kind of more dainty feeling of the armor as it goes to the top of the character. And I don't necessarily want to have like a giant thing on top of Mika's head right now. So let's go ahead and shrink that down. And something that I find that works really well, if you're struggling with creating um, designs, like the actual designs and refining things, try to just think of it in terms of shapes. Think of it in terms of shapes. So here's a perfect example. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this uh, shoulder armor. Let's see if we can pull out a shape in this. So I'm seeing something that looks like this. I'm seeing a shape in here that looks like this. Now that right there is really awesome. And the reason why is because there's a clear shape that's happening within here. You can see the geometry that would create this shoulder piece. And then what we can do from there is we can add in like these little shines. You can add in a little kind of like a specular that would kind of 
show more of the metallic nature of this. And then from there, the really fun part is a really cool design thing that you can do on shoulder pads is just replicate this bottom shape over and over again. Just replicate this shape and then replicate it again and just make it a little bit smaller each time. And there you go. You have yourself a cool little design right there, a possible design for your armor. And all you had to do is you just worked with shapes. You're working with shapes and values. Okay, so there we go. There we go. What I'm thinking here is that we'll have a maybe a sleeve that comes down like this. And then right here, there will be a really kind of, it kind of cinches itself and like gets tight around the glove, or in this case, the bracers and the gauntlets. Let's go ahead and have Mika's hand right here. So notice how I just paint that all in. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of erase away and kind of carve it back to the way that I want it to look like that. Okay, see, see where we're going? Ah, you like that. <laughs> and let's go ahead and sketch in. Okay, I definitely want a large, I'm a fan of couchers, right? The, the piece of armor that protects the inner elbow as well as the outer elbow. I'm a fan of those. So let's go ahead and get a large one going there. And again, just paint in that gray to kind of pull out that shape. See, easy, easy. Show the edges of it, how it sticks off of the edge of the armor, or in this case, the cloth. And there you have a good old couture. Very easy, very easy. And then in there, this will be kind of the fabric. But again, notice how I'm also playing up the fact of contrast. I'm keeping in mind contrast with my design. I'm allowing the differences in the values to tell more of the story of what's happening within the armor. Okay, so moving on to this part, I really like the breastplate. And I want to kind of simulate what's happening over here with like this double breasted kind of button up type thing. It's even present over here in this piece here. Uh, I really like the overlaid uh, fabric that's happening down from the neck. And I want to see if I can actually replicate that. I want to replicate that. So we'll have the collar, which comes down like this. Let's go ahead and draw in the edge of the collar. And then from there, let's draw in the fabric, which would lay down on top of this. And you can do that by, again, sketching in that dark shape. One, another really great uh, tip as well as something that was taught to me or reinforced by my good friend, Kalen, is that whenever you're sketching with values, it's oftentimes a lot easier to lay in the basic shapes with dark values and then go in and add the lighter values afterwards. So start dark and then make your way towards the lighter values. Okay, so we might end up with something looking like this. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, I like that a lot, actually. And then right here, we had the corset, which can also double as our the bottom of our breastplate. Now I'm noticing as I'm doing this, the proportions of the character are starting to kind of come into better play here. I'm starting to notice the, the actual proportions need a tad bit of help, but that is okay. That is okay. Notice how I'm gonna add in this lighter value right here. I want this to be breastplate area. I want this to be breastplate territory. Okay, cool. And then right here, this will be, this could be another piece of metal, I would say. But I also want to try to work in this double breasted feeling uh, with these buttons. I really like what's happening in here. So maybe we could do a design like this. Let's go ahead and carve this away. Now you can see we have something that looks fabric, but we want it to appear more metallic. So what are we gonna do? Well, one thing that I'm gonna do to make this appear more metallic is I'm gonna heighten this contrast on this specular right here. And then I'm actually just gonna push this down. I'm gonna push this value downwards. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna add a little bit more bright colors here to kind of give our breastplate, like the kind of the shape of the breastplate, the upper part, a little bit more room to breathe. Uh, maybe something like this would look good. Ah, yes, ah, 
That's good. That's good. I like that. And then from there, maybe we'll have a design like this that looks a little bit more integrated into the breastplate. And let's keep these values similar. That way it appears to be, again, the same type of metal. So we'll have something like this, and we'll have that, that specular continue downwards like that. And we'll have this be slightly darker. And then what we talked about before, let's draw in the tacits, which is all right, the parts that stick off of our breastplate. Or it's, let's at least get started on it. So the tacits will go like this. We're kind of borrowing some of that shape language that we learned last week from Ornstein's armor. Because I really, really liked that. Really, really liked that. Although I don't want it to look too insecty. I like the shape language that we had up here of the on this shoulder piece. I like the simplicity of it and the mixture of the sharp and roundness. Whereas down here with the tassets, we might be going too sharp. So let's see if there's a way for us to kind of get some of that motif back into there. Maybe instead of having it point towards the center, maybe we can have it point towards the middle. So maybe something more like this. So maybe it's rounded here and then pointed at the center. Ah, there we go. There we go. Now we're starting to get some way. I like it. I like it. That's quite cute. I like that. And again, let's go ahead and draw in some of that darker value. Love it. Love it. There we go. Not too crazy. Good enough to get us going there. Ha! I like it. I like it a lot. Now within here, uh, yeah, so let's have the tabard coming from beneath the beneath all of the tassets as well as the breastplate. And let's have that come down like this. So now we have this large open shape right here, which represents our apron. Very cool. And then I imagine as we go in and add in all the little filigree and little tiny stitching, stitching patterns, see how I'm just going to kind of sketch this in. I'll sketch in shapes like this. I'll sketch in little things saying that, oh, I want noise to be here. But as far as the exact design of it, I don't want to get bogged down into that just yet. Okay. And then from here, let's go ahead and add in some of the pleats. I really want there to be like pleats of a skirt happening within here. And then you'll notice that sometimes you run into this problem of, okay, well, I want a dark value to be here, Keenan, right, for the skirt, but then, oh no, it totally blends in with the rest of the arm. It blends, or now I've lost the hand. So what I would say that you would do here is just for the sake of design, keep these, keep the pleats a little bit brighter just so that way you can still see the hand in there or ask yourself, can I change the value here? Can I change the value on that hand? And you might ask, well, how do I do that, Keenan? It's easy. All you have to do is say, well, what would make the value brighter? Well, in this case, we could use either a brighter material or we could say maybe her hand is exposed there. Maybe the hand and the skin, therefore being a lighter value in this case, we can use that to our advantage and say, okay, there, now she has an exposed hand. And now we can make the pleats dark as intended. So these are all things that you need to consider as you are designing. You wanna make sure that you are balancing out your values and making sure that you design something that's gonna read clearly. And that can be done by changing uh, like where skin shows, or in this case, if it was a darker skin character like Mocha, and I wanted her hand to show, I would make the leather or whatever glove was there a lighter material that way it would still appear against her dark pleats if she had them there as well but you can see how you can push and pull different values to different places to fit whatever need you have and that is the puzzle that you are trying to solve as a concept artist one of the puzzles one of the many puzzles so and it, speaking of mocha i do want to design another armor set for her as well and we will be we will be designing many more armor sets for mocha and nika this is just one of many. And actually, this is a new kind of thing that I wanted to get the hang of. I wanted to see if it was possible to, to do this. 
Okay, so I really liked the large pieces that came down like this. This is the point where I'm gonna actually hit Control J because I'm gonna make two different versions here. I want one with a shorter skirt to show off uh, Mika's legs because I think she has cute legs and I wanted to have like the, the cute like maid stockings on her to be showing on her legs. But then I also wanted like a more heavily armored version where the pleats go down much further. And I think it will actually look a lot better with something like the longer tabard kind of hanging down. Because if you have the long tabard and the short skirt, it's gonna look imbalanced. So let's go ahead and start with this one. So let's start with the longer pleats because that's what we designed first. And that is what is gonna look more uh, balanced. And let's do the short skirt version to be more cute and kind of sexy. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with that. Ah, oh, the joys of being a concept artist, I love it. And yes, that is right. You guys get to see everything because I like to work around all kinds of different variations for my characters. In fact, I mean, we're just limited here to 30 to 45 minutes, but actually when I'm concepting for myself, I make hundreds. I like, I'll make like 10 is the least amount of sketches that I'll do. And I'll, I'll make endless variations until I finally get to the exact one that I like. Uh, but this is just here to show you guys one of many variations that I will make on my character and that you should be excited about doing yourself. You should get excited about making multiple iterations. You should never get hung up and feel like you have to make just one work. Um, so anyway, so let's continue with that. Okay, so we've got this long pleats, these long kind of, uh, I imagine these would be like leather. So another thing that you want to consider with leather is to make it reinforced. There would be stitching that would be going throughout here here very cool dang that looks really awesome really proud of this i'm proud of this i'm feeling strong and you should be too if you're following along let's go ahead and add in a little cast shadow right there a little cast shadow kind of uh bring that transition a little bit uh make that transition a little bit easier on the eyes and let's go ahead and draw on the other side of that armor piece the other side of that shoulder armor digging that digging that and then down here we would move into the greaves the greaves which I'm not gonna worry too much about because designing boots is actually very very technical and awesome and a great challenge to take on however it's one of my least favorite things to draw so in this case I'm just gonna focus on just making a general shape that feels good Something like that might work. That looks pretty good. Uh, she, her ankle is a little broken. Let's see if we can fix that. We'll have her foot go in like that. Ah! Fixed it. Fixed it. There we go. Easy. Easy peasy. Okay, and then we'll have this piece of armor go out like this. And then this grieve goes up like that. Now notice how I'm just keeping in mind when you're drawing greaves, just keep in mind the point where it needs, your foot needs to articulate and move and just make sure that there is a separation there. That's the simple way to draw greaves. Greaves. Also these plates tend to overlap an actual existing boot underneath. But again, we might be getting too technical with the stuff. Again, early in these phases, you just wanna focus on getting something that looks good. And look at that, look at that. We're getting ourselves an awesome armored armored look for Mika. She's looking cute, she's looking awesome. Uh, let's see here. For the sash, I wonder if there's still a way that we can work that in. I'm going to see if I can draw in a leather, maybe a leather belt would look good here that could function as our sash. So for the belt, Let's see, maybe we'll draw in a design like this. Maybe something like this would work. Let's just keep it simple for now. See, look, see how I just drew that belt just by using value? Very, very easy stuff to do. Well, once you get it down. I, I say it's easy, but it takes practice. But once you get it down, it's, it's very, it comes second nature. But I hope that watching me work with values really opens up your eyes to the value, right, of working with them. And that looks cool. I'm gonna kind of clean up this face a little bit more. And then we're gonna move into the cute short skirt version because I wanna make sure we have that as well. We need that design. Okay, and then we've got our bow. 
The way I see it is that Mocha has the more, she'll usually have the more practical designs for her armor and Mika is more focused on being cute. So, but she can be, she can have these armor designs too, these actual uh, practical working ones that would actually protect you in a battle. I think that's important as well. But just for the sake of being a concept artist, we gotta explore everything. And that's what we're gonna do. Cool. Awesome. Let's go ahead and duplicate that layer and let's move into the cute version. Cute version. Uh, actually, let's start with this one. Let's start with this one. I like this one because we didn't put the belt on yet. Yeah, this one's gonna be easier to mess around with. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop off this tabard. We're gonna make it smaller. We're gonna make it much more uh, like the actual look of a mage uniform. And let's go ahead and shorten down these pleats here. So we'll have something like this. And then I'm actually gonna knock down these legs because I'm just gonna redraw them. I'm just gonna redraw these legs. Lovely. Cool. So the way that I like to do this is I just imagine the anatomy underneath. I'll draw what I'm seeing within my mind, right? You, you have the hips here, right? And I like to draw it like a mannequin, right? So I'll be like, okay, here is where the leg goes. There's the crotch. There's the other leg. And then from there, the legs are going to come out like that. See, super easy. I oftentimes do this on like a separate layer as well when I want to get the kind of drawings down. I actually really like the way those legs look. I really like the way those legs look. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, let's see, what can I do there? Well, I can just lower the saturation. Ideally, I should have done that on another layer, but since we didn't, it's all good. We can just work with that. We can just work with that and we can paint this stuff away. Love it. In fact, actually, I want to keep it like that. I'm going to duplicate that because what I want to do is I want to draw in the stockings. The stockings are going to be like right about there. And then I want a little bit more of the leg to show. So maybe like that. I think that looks good. So now we know how high the skirt needs to go. Okay, so we're designing first the stockings and the parts that we want to show. And then from there, we can add on the rest of the armor to kind of suit that. Okay, lovely. Easy way to make things look shiny, just draw a value down one side and then draw a value up the other, but just kind of leave that open spot in the middle. I do that all the time, all the time I do that. Saves so much time and, uh, and it's really fun. Cool, very cute, very cute. Okay, cool, and I don't know how this is gonna look. We might get done with this and it's gonna look hideous, right? To <laughs> have like this supposedly uh, real looking armor with uh, these stockings, these terribly exposed impractical stockings. But it might look cool too. It might look cool too. I actually really like these armored boots at the bottom. Like maybe we could like expand these up to like look like this. So maybe she has like these armored boots on yeah, that looks really cool. It's feeling cool, right? It's feeling cool. Following my artistic instinct. And I'm saying that it feels cool. Feeling good, feeling strong, feeling strong. There we go. Cool. Very, very good. Okay, so one thing that I really liked about the other design is that this one just Oh man, that just that looks so cool. <laughs> it looks really cool by default or like by comparison. And um, and I'm asking myself why? Why does this feel super awesome? And the reason is because there's like just large shapes. There's huge shapes in this piece. And it's very interesting and pleasing for us to look at. And when I say large shapes, we have huge areas of rest like Mika's hair and then this and then this. And what's happening when we take those away uh, when we go here, see the problem is is that we have large shapes here and here and here, but now we're kind of getting into like these all these little intricate details. We don't have any area to rest. You can kind of rest on her leg, but again, it's so skinny and small that it doesn't really work. So here's what we're gonna do to combat that. We want to take the volume, or we want to take what was pleasing to our eye with those large shapes and the other piece, 
uh, in this one here. And let's begin taking that volume and that mass and let's push it out to the side. And we can do that by making the skirt extra fluffy. Or at least this is what I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and control J that. And let's continue with this. Oops, did I hit caps lock? Okay, all right, awesome. Let's go ahead and save that. So let's take that volume, the volume that was in the skirt going downward before, and now let's take that volume and push it outwards. And this might end up giving us a little bit more of that awesome feeling that we had before. And we're gonna do that with the use of the bow, which is in the back here, and as well as the skirt pleats. We can push them out way to the side. There could be like a really crazy uh, petticoat in here or wh whatever that thing is called. You know what I'm saying? The piece that holds up the, the actual skirt. It could be really, really puffy and like uh, wired, right? So now we have this huge kind of overarching uh, skirt. Cool, that looks pretty cute. And we can also increase the size of this, increase the size of the apron that hangs down. Something like that might work. Cool, so now we have we have something that's a little bit more pleasing to look at because we've added mass. We've added additional mass to this. And I want to have the, the uh, ribbons as well hanging down. That can help us. That can help to aid us in adding mass back to this, giving us our pleasing shapes back to this character. Love it. And so that gives us another alternate route, another alternate route. So uh, the next thing that I want to uh, explore is actually seeing if there's a way to combine these two, because I love the feeling of this. And I love the feeling of this. I think they're both awesome. I think they're both cute. But is there a way that we can bring them both together? That is the question. And with that, we're going to move into the next phase, and that is called refinement. Refinement. Did I spell that right? I really hope I did. Whatever. <laughs> Refinement. So what we're going to do now is, I think we need a little bit more space maybe. I'm gonna shrink this down. Or actually, I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna start with this and I wanna bring it more towards this one. So I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna move this over. And let's go ahead and just get rid of our references now because sometimes it is good to take away your references when you have something that you like. You have something started that you like and you want to begin refining and combining things. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, actually, I want the references gone, but I only want one side of them gone. So let's go ahead and merge these. And let's grab these. Delete that. There we go. Okay, cool. So now I have the references on the right on the left side, which I really liked. Okay, so we have duplicated and we are ready to go. Okay, so the first question that I'm asking myself is how do I take this design and how do I make it feel strong like the one on the right? It's cute, right? The one on the left is cute. And this one is strong, if you wanted to call it, if you wanted to name them. But what I'm looking for is cute and strong. So how do I add that back into it? How do I inject that back into this? And what I'm guessing that we need to move towards is we need to add a little bit more armor to the legs. So we're going to do that by uh, taking these stockings and let's again take the motifs that we have proven to work, like up in the shoulder area, and let's go ahead and begin adding those to the legs. Let's see if there's a way to make those work in the legs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a couple plates like this. And then we need to be make sure that we're cautious of the actual knee. We want to make sure that that is able to move. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a I'm going to add in a boot or a greave here. And this piece is going to stick out. See how I kind of draw the edges of the plates by adding in those lighter values? Super easy, but let's keep it nice and thin. Let's keep it very form-fitting. That way it feels strong yet dainty and beautiful. As Mika should be. Mika is the beautiful flower. I think that's what her name <laughs> translates to. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty dang cool. 
Okay, and then here we can have maybe like a strap that kind of connects this. And then underneath there, maybe if we wanted to get really detailed, this is the final details, we would go in there and we would add in like say lacing. That would be really cool. But I'll represent that just by adding in some additional noise there. Cool, cool. So see what we've done now is we have something that represents that same space but now it feels stronger. It feels like she's actually armored there. Okay, so that is a possible fix, a possible win. And uh, because this skirt poofs out so much, uh, I want to actually reduce the size of these tassets because I want there to be space for these, for the actual skirt to flow out from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heighten this tasset. See what I just did there? I took all the tassets that were going downwards that would push that skirt downward. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconstruct a new one that sits right here, maybe a second uh, layer right there as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these other tassets like this. And now we have a new design. A new design, a deed is done. And this one just might work out a little bit better. Cool. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of detail or a little bit of change in value here just to show exactly where the pleats of the skirt are happening. So they're going to be there as well as right there. And then I like this to feel, I want this to feel straight, like a straighter kind of tabard feeling coming down. So maybe we'll straighten that up just a little bit. Straighten that up. Good. Okay, let's add in those lighter values again to get that pleating of the skirt on point. Good, let's erase this. Another thing that really helps your concepts to look more finished is to make sure that you're getting in there and refining your edges. Okay, I want a little bit, oh, did I say, what did I call this before? Did I say petticoat? I, th I think I called it something else, but regardless. I wanna show some of that petticoat kind of sticking out. This thing would have to be really reinforced in order to hold up that skirt like that. So let's make sure that it looks really puffy and awesome. I can even kind of bring it kind of in this area. It looks good. And then let's draw in that plating on this side as well. So from this angle, we're going to see a little bit more of this plate and this plate. Easy mm -hmm. enough, simple enough. Uh, just for information, just for your information, I oftentimes will, if I define the shapes on one leg, I'll make the second leg a lot less detailed. Like I'll be like, okay, let's just do the general silhouette. Let's just do the general silhouette of what that grieve looks like, but not getting too much into it. All right, just for the general, just for the general concept phase, because the last thing you want to do is get in there and be like, okay, let's start adding. Like you don't want to ever get in there and start adding in like, okay, let's start adding in all this filigree and, and uh, beveling and detailing and then at the end, oh yeah, and like make sure there's like a shine on it so it looks like really metallic. Oh yeah, that's really nice. And then you zoom out and you're like, oh, that looks terrible. In this case, it doesn't look that bad, but you don't want to zoom out and have it look like crap, okay? Because then you realize that you spent, you know, half an hour or 20 minutes refining something when it didn't work from the basic foundation. And by foundation, I'm talking about the silhouette. So that's why as I'm just getting this stuff down, I'll stick to making sure that things are a little bit simpler, okay? There's plenty of time. You have the rest of your days to refine something and make it look nice, but you need to make sure that you're building upon proper foundations, okay? So make sure that you get in there, or rather you don't get in there, <laughs> stay loose, stay, stay in the concepting phase when it's time to be there, and then when you need to go in there and refine things, that's when you can finally buckle down and get to that. I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting to want to refine everything and add your details and make it look pretty. But at the beginning, you got to make sure that you have something that makes sense. 
have something that makes sense, have something that looks nice. Cool. Speaking of looking nice, I'm digging that. That looks pretty dang cool. Pretty dang cool. Let's go ahead and flip it. Let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so speaking of refining things, I can already tell that by having these knee pads stick out that much, it's already diminishing the cuteness of her legs that, that were there before. So what I might opt to do here is to make this silhouette even more form-fitting. So maybe what happens at this knee pad here is that this knee is very, very small. The knee pad is not jutting out and huge. It's not like this, right? Rather, it's going to be very uniform and small fitting to the actual knee that's underneath. That way we can preserve that, that silhouette. Okay, not bad, not bad. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's feeling pretty good. In fact, what I might end up doing is completely mixing this greave and maybe just making it more like a form-fitting leather boot. So let's go ahead and get rid of this entire thing. Let's get rid of this entire greave. So maybe there will be a little bit of See, this is why we do this. This is why we do this. Because you look at it and you're like, it's not quite there for me. I lost something. I lost something and I want to go back. Take me back. And luckily you can do that with Photoshop. So maybe instead what this will be now is uh, like a leather boot. It kind of comes down like that. It's more form fitting. Yeah, something maybe more like that. I'll have to figure that out some more as we go. But um, yeah, but I'm really digging the extra volume that we've added with the skirt here. I'm really digging that. I like the extra volume that we added with the large bow. I think that is a win as well. Also, another thing that really helps is you might say, well, Keenan, isn't that bow in the back, isn't that supposed to be black as well? Isn't that supposed to be a dark value? So why wouldn't I just paint it like this? Why don't I take that dark value and paint the bow black like this? And the problem arises, as you can see, is all this stuff begins to blend together. So in this case, what I'm saying is that the bow is a lighter color because it's further in the background. It's further in the background, and that's helping to describe the depth of the piece, which is another thing that you can do. Another thing that I do very, very often is making things lighter values as they go back into the background. Okay. So with that, I think this is the point where we would take a small break. This is the point where we're going to take a small break and we're going to reflect on what we've done. And we are going to continue with part two. We're going to have a really awesome time designing the rest of our made of metal piece. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. You can click right here to head on over to part two. I'll see you guys in just a moment. Until then, stay seated and join me with our paint along. Continue painting along with me. That's what I meant to say. See you guys soon.